Hi, Georgia. Great to meet you. Can you tell me more about Beauty Wines? Sure. So this is a single serve glass of wine. It's designed to take wine places the glass bottle can't go, from outdoor events to airlines to a picnic. How did it all begin? I was at a music festival in Melbourne and I went to the bar and couldn't get a glass of wine because it was too hard to serve. And I was one of those people that actually followed through with the stupid idea you get at university. So here I am today with a factory and offices overseas from something that started out at a Melbourne festival. You mentioned it was a silly idea and so many people don't progress. Uh, what was that first step you took? That concept around um, sort of ignorance and being naive and not actually knowing what you're getting into yeah. is a fabulous thing. And so I approached every day like that. The wine industry is very old, it's run by families that are, you know, three or four generations. They've been making wine in this format. And I mean, part of my challenge was yes. presenting a single serve format. That's why we spent a lot of time and money developing a plastic glass that looked like a wine glass. I really appreciate the way that you do break down things into small manageable chunks and try things out. Uh, within NAB Labs, where we test uh, innovations, uh, similar to you, we break down a, a large opportunity into what is the first smallest thing we need to test mm -hmm. to see if there is demand and there's viability. Often that engages into acting with our customers. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about uh, your foray into Asia and how did you take that initial first step? Well, I've actually spent a lot of time in Asia. I studied in Beijing. That's, that's our opportunity for business. And so Australia is fantastic, but a really good um, launch pad into Asia. There's millions more people in, in each city, in each country. And so I spent a lot of time establishing these markets and understanding what they're drinking, what they want, whether it's a rosé or a chardonnay, something sweet, something dry. Did you have any concerns around your patents or around your technology being um, you know, copied or duplicated? Yeah, well, it's, it's always the case. If you're doing something and you're doing it well enough, then someone's going to copy you. And that's, re that's reality and it's business. It's about staying, having a, a competitive edge, doing something that they can't do. And for me, Asia, um, at, at, at this stage, don't make wine like we do. Uh, how have you approached uh, you know, legally protecting yourself with such an innovative idea? It's a, it's a really interesting entrepreneurial journey because you start with just an idea and when I started I didn't even properly understand what a patent was. I know that it's important and they're valuable but I didn't understand its true value. I think so many entrepreneurs in the beginning uh, are a little bit confused and don't know where exactly they should spend their time, their resources and their money. And uh, One of the first things that comes up is patent. You know, how do you actually protect this idea? Because so many entrepreneurs fall in love with the idea, uh, where often it's the execution of that idea um, that actually builds the value. Whatever type of business you're doing, first learn where the value is, um, and then once you understand that actually there is something that can turn into some really great value, then engage the right professionals. Uh, a provisional right. patent is uh, a great way to do that uh, simply. Initially, I think it gives you up to about 12 months. You've got 12 you months actually... before you actually need to put the detail behind it. Absolutely. And so you're better off registering and then you can change those words along the way. Exactly. So um, you're a very innovative product. How do you maintain that uh, lead in innovation and how do you innovate yourself? Well, I mean, innovation's our lifeline, and this is our product now, but what it's going to look like in five years is completely different, and so it's getting lots and lots of feedback. Getting feedback from customers is one of the most important things you can do as a, as a growing business. It's something we do within NAB Labs. Uh, through our 12-week uh, program, every week we're engaging with customers and testing different things with them. Mm. Um, and, and I find that's a wonderful way to understand about new trends and new opportunities. There's a concept called the black swan moment whereby um, if you were to interview 100 customers and ask them uh, what would you like to change or what would you improve, 99 would generally tell you the exact same thing, yet there's a one out of 100 that will actually give you a really interesting opportunity which could actually be a new product line, a new uh, sales strategy, uh, a new distribution area. 80% of my time now is moving away from plastics and so we've engaged RMIT and the CSIRO. For me, industry and universities need to be really working together. It creates better innovations for our economy, um, it creates a, a more competitive economy for, for what we want to do in export and those sorts of things and, and really the future for Australia in manufacturing is advanced manufacturing. It's such a good point. Uh, Innovation often doesn't come from within the, in the industry, mm. so it's such an important comment and concept to, to look at how other industries are either selling, producing, manufacturing and, and seeing how you can learn from those. Oh, Beatty Wines is a cracking business, Tim. Is that good tips from Humphrey, but 
He comes from this NAB Labs business you've got. What's that all about? Yeah, so Koshi, NAB Labs is a customer-centric uh, design and innovation hub that we've set up here at NAB. And it's all about learning from the customer, designing product and agile product around the customer and bringing it to market quickly. Because that's our big advantage as a small business, isn't it? That we can be agile, we can be nimble, but we can't bet the house on any experiments. Yeah, and I think that's one of the great advantages that small business have, is that they can experiment. You know, you can conduct some uh, safe-to-fail experiments. Uh, you can put them out into market and test them with your customers, learn from that, enhance, adjust, and have a go again. Just terrific. Tim, good to see you. All right, let's take a look at this week's elevator pitch.